Hey guys, it's Emmanuel. I just want to do a very quick video in regards to 10 tips, 10 things that I've taken away from my late mother who uh, passed away with, with pancreatic cancer. She was an oncologist and she worked for Kaiser Permanente in California. And um, she's someone that's very dear to me. For those of you who know me very, very well, I probably have brought her up a couple of times and how much she does mean to me. And so I want to do a video real quick and dedication for her. She's always in my mind a lot, especially with the work that I do. Um, especially when I when I work with inherited emotions, people that uh, have inherited something from their mother or father, there's times where I work on myself and it leads to my mother. And it's, be it's a beautiful thing to know that I can also heal her as well on the other side. And so I wanted to talk about 10 things that we can all learn from, I, I believe, our, um, you know, my mother. And this could be someone who's an entrepreneur, maybe stay-at-home mom, uh, perhaps another practitioner. Hopefully you'll appreciate uh, these 10 things. And so number one... <clears throat> stay after hours. Uh, if you have a pen with you, it'd be great. You know, just little tips. You know, you never know if you could just take two of these tips and run with it. I know you could probably change your life. So t one thing is stay after hours. I know that uh, her mother told me that when she was doing an internship in Peru, uh, Lima, Peru, that she would basically stay after hours. Um, even though she had to only intern a certain amount of hours, she told me that she would sleep like on a bench uh, for a couple of minutes or take a quick nap and then work with people all around the clock, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., because she was just passionate about having more experience in the field. I think that's something that we can all learn is that we'll never be very successful if you always do the bare minimum, that the the marketplace and just people in general, they I think they really honor your work ethic if you go beyond the mark. And so stay after hours. I think that's very powerful thing that I learned from my mother is that if I can if I can add more time or if I can put something else to add value to people, I do do that. Um, number two is um, in Peru, they have a different school system where as soon as they find out your passions, similar to like Elon Musk's school that he created, they kind of cater to that. And so obviously in, in our general school, they don't really, you know, you know, say, okay, well, at nine years old, you already love science or whatever. Maybe you want to be a doctor. Let's start taking classes that kind of shape you that way. That's not, I mean, there's less undecided college attendees in Peru than there are in America, probably because they cater to their passions early. Now, if we live in a system that doesn't provide that or for your children, we can provide that in our homes. And so I've, I've kind of always asked my kids, what do you love to do? What do you love to do all day? Things like that, just because that's kind of the way that I would want it set up is that I would want them to work on their passions, what they do. So um, I think it's very important that whether it's yourself or your family or friends, just to kind of really hone in on like, what are you good at? Uh, I think Gary uh, Vaynerchuk also says that too. He says, do an, uh, an audit on yourself and find out what you're good at. Uh, number three is um, studying. You know, you have to study in your craft. I know she was considered a bookworm in her times. And uh, she'd always be studying. And what I love is she would go to conferences all the time, traveling. Hey, do you want to go to Spain with me? Hey, do you want to go to Africa? Hey, do you want... She was always going to some acupuncture conference or holistic healing conference, things that were outside the spectrum of, of Kaiser because she wanted to see how she could help patients out. And so uh, I admire that. And so I think us going... I just went to a conference two weeks ago. I'm going to go to another... I want to go to another conference in Arizona. So I'm constantly trying to acquire new information. If you have to travel, so be it. You can call it, uh, you know, a, a workcation, as uh, my friend Tuan would say, is workcation is, you know, working and then also having a vacation as well. Um, that's number three is, is study. Put in your study. Uh, number four, it's okay to be controversial. Uh, so what's interesting is that, you know, Kaiser just recently started talking about Thrive. But most of you know in the, in the Western... Western uh, medical society that uh, we're not, they're not about thriving. They're about masking. They're about, uh, you know, you have a, um, they, they're called like, you know, heroic acts started back in the civil war. Your, your leg gets hurt. We have to amputate the leg. That's kind of the system that we live in right now is danger, danger. You're in the red zone. Now a doctor comes in, but now they've been suddenly focusing on thrive. My mother was doing that back in the seventies and she really believed in overall wellness. And I think that whatever we do, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a mentor, whether you're a life coach, I think the main thing is kind of like what are people doing themselves to not make you so codependent on you? Uh, you know, give people some power so they can live their lives independent of whatever value you're bringing. And so she would always work on their on their diet. She would work on their 
on their mindset, their relationships, just kind of see what's happening that created the cancer in the first place. And for those of you who know me and work with me, you understand that I do that, that I give you these things called life hacks, something that you can do on your own time. And so uh, that's uh, that's number four is it's okay to be, uh, you know, just just uh, controversial, you know, and uh, uh, the reality is, is that, uh, you know, even emotion code at this point, some people will say, you know, how is that possible? You can heal somebody from a different state or country. It doesn't matter. The thing is, is if you really want to make a dent in life, you're going to be controversial. Steve Jobs is controversial. You know, there's so many different people that, you know, were very cutting edge and they stood their ground because they knew that what they had was valuable. And so whatever you're doing, if you're controversial, don't be scared of that. Go into that zone and just own it. And so that's that's something that my, my mother definitely owned. Uh, number five is... Um, is being selfless, you know. Um, I've never been happier than when I go way out of my way to help someone out. I know that my mother, before she passed away, uh, she believed in this this therapy called immunotherapy, and um, which is basically it's using light and like a seashell formula and helping people out with with uh, metastatic breast cancer. In Peru, they have different laws where you know you have to be a certain stage of cancer, almost like stage three, to actually be to actually be someone compliant to fit in clinical trials. It's kind of, it's a horrible uh, mafia oriented thing where that's the case. That's the only way you can participate in clinical trials is when you're destitute and have nothing. But my mother would come in there and serve them. Even though she had cancer herself, she was going down there and serving other people. So you have to be, I really feel like most of the success attributed to her is the fact that she never worried about the money. She just worried about helping people any way she can. She even told me that when I was a kid. She said, man, you'll never count the money. Just just, just help people and service. Uh, money will come as a byproduct of your, of your heart, of the fact that you're going out there and helping people. So make sure you have a selfless heart. You may have to sacrifice um, some things to be selfless, and it's worth it. So selfless is number five. Uh, number six, um, she tutored my father. This is kind of funny. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I've always believed this. And if, if you're a woman and you're one of my clients, I've always said you have way more power than you think you do in the relationship. And one of the things that my dad said, he was thinking about staying back in Peru. And my mother said, uh, if you want to get married with me, uh, you're going to have to go to America because there's no opportunity here. So we're going to America. It's, it, it wasn't kind of like a debate. It was just if you if you want if we're gonna be successful, we have to go to America. And um, if you want to get married with me, she she basically put that on the line: marriage. Uh, you better come to America with me. And so he went. He went to America. And so um, I think we should hold on to that power. That um, you know, don't make excuses. You know, my dad was in the top fifty percent of UCLA medical school. My mom was in the top twenty. So my mother would tutor him. No excuses. We're both become successful. Let's make it happen. Hey, we're not staying in Peru. Let's go. These are drastic things, you know, tutoring someone, traveling to a different country, you know, like it's just, it's, it's like they could have said, well, that that's where you're going to be, um, school academic wise, you know, husband, but it wasn't like that. So, so I love the fact that it's kind of a, no matter what I'm going to, I'm going to get this happen. You have to have that type of attitude. Um, she definitely didn't make excuses. And so, um, the next one's number seven, which is, um, just ignore the haters. Uh, she moved into, when she moved to California in a very nice area called Rancho Palos Verdes, um, you know, the first neighbor told her, says, Hey, how could you, hi, how are you? You know, what's your name? Blah, blah, great. So, so how could you afford this place? I mean, it's like of all the things to tell a woman, it's just terrible. And uh, maybe because she was, she looked Hispanic, kind of Asian, that, you know, they just, he just judged her. And uh, she just kind of smirked it off and just, you know, thought, just made a joke back. But that's, that, that's my mom, though, is that, um, you know, there's probably a lot of people who came to her and said, holistic practice? Come on, Maria. Like, come on, you went to UCLA, you should know better, blah, blah, blah. And she just had to smirk it off because she did know better. And that if you are intelligent, then you would probably look at ancient cultures and that it would be very egotistical of us to think that b- because we're here in the modern world that we can't learn from old cultures. And she understood that old cultures could have figured it out already. And we've just kind of, you know, digressed and now we have to bring it back again. And so uh, just the fact that you, the, every le- they say every level is a new devil. I would say every level there's new devils, people that are going to talk down about you and things like that. And just you know, if people say something stupid, answer with something stupid, you know, and that's what that's what Jim Rohn taught me is if, if someone asks you a stupid question, give them a stupid answer, you know, and so there's going to be haters, just be okay with that. 
Number eight is, um, I remember that she was, uh, um, you know, a certain type of faith her, her whole life. And she started looking into like what I believed in my faith. And uh, she actually converted like later on. And so what that, what that tells me is that and that was like 64 years old. So what does that say? It means KQE. So number, number eight is KQE, which means keep questioning everything. Keep questioning everything. Like if you're so solid on your beliefs, then you should have no problem questioning them over and over and over again. Just, just reassess it. Be like, is this still true? Is this still, you know? And um, she did that. And I think that's very powerful for a doctor, someone so heady to be able to question like, hmm, I wonder what, if what I believe for 64 years is something higher, you know, and she did. And so that always, even in my case, I'm willing to look at what other people believe and everything. Why? Because I'm still in the path of KQE, keep, keep questioning everything. I want to keep that. Uh, number nine is do what you love. She never told me to become a doctor. She says, if you don't enjoy reading this huge book of red blood cells, then I, then maybe you shouldn't be a doctor. Um, do what you love to do. And she actually let me become a musician for a couple of years. And so I, I really love the fact that she said, life is about finding what you love to do. Uh, number 10 is serve till the end. And so uh, there's a picture of my mother and she's, um, she's with uh, uh, Joshua. Uh, it's a great picture. Actually, let me, let me show it to you real quick. Um, it's a picture real quick of her and, uh, you know, basically it shows her doing her final diagnosis. See, if you see, there's a pen right there. She's actually, he was having stomach pains and I think it was because of maybe some bacteria or, you know, something that he ate, you know, obviously, you know, not used to the water there in Mexico. And so he, she was basically writing out a, a little diagnosis for him and saying, you should take this, you should look into this and blah, blah, blah. And even in the hospital bed, she still did that. Even in the hospital bed, I was sleeping next to her. This was about two days before she passed away. She put a blanket over me, even though she needed more comfort. She needed, um, she needed more comfort at that time, and she was still giving. So passion actually comes. People think that passion is always enjoyment, always excitement, but it's not. It's passion is kind of, it's related to the passion of Christ. Like that's a, it's a very, like, it's like a sacred suffering. That's kind of where passion comes from, the, the root of it. So what it is, is when you find something that's sacred, that's something that's, that um, uh, is aligned with your divine self, that you're willing to suffer for it. That's what real passion is. Like businesses that you're in or adventures that you're taking on, you're willing to not eat. For, for a point of time, you're not willing to get paid or you're not willing to be embarrassed. You're willing to suffer for that. And so that's what she taught me. She did have a passion in the, for the medicine world, and for, uh, medicine world and healing. And we can all learn from that. It's like, what are we willing to suffer for? It's not all raise, um, you know, just like roses and, and daisies. It's just not, it's just, just not, it's not the real thing. And so that for me, it taught me that there's going to be ups and downs. What am I willing to suffer for it? Well, what I do right now as, a, as an emotion code practitioner, I'm willing to suffer for it. If I had to live in a box and I had to help people out that way, but it was the only way that I could help people, I would still do it just because it's something that I believe it's, it's um, connected with my divine self. And so with that, hopefully you guys appreciate those 10 things. Number one, like I said, stay after hours. Number two is cater towards your passion. Number three is take your studying seriously. Take conferences. Number four, it's okay to be controversial. Number five, be uh, completely selfless. Like selfless, like I said, she would go down to Peru and assist people that had no money, no nothing. Have some way that you can you can give charity back to people in your society. Uh, for us, as we help out veterans, two veterans a month that have PTSD. For uh, we do that for um, so the twenty four veterans a year. Uh, number seven is just ignore the haters. They're going to come every level. There's new devils, right? Number eight is keep questioning everything. You'll, 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 if you want to get to the next paradigm of life, keep questioning things. Number nine is do what you love. Um, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't buy into what people think you should do. Number 10 is serve till the end. What are you willing to suffer for your passion? So hopefully you enjoyed this and, uh, feel free to take any of these, these notes and run with it. And hopefully my mother's life has added value to yours. And if you knew her, I guarantee, um, you would understand that she will work in progress. We're all a work in progress. Don't be so hard on yourself. But I think these, te these 10 things were like the fiber of her, of her bones and that it really made her the amazing person that she was. And I think to this day, people who knew her and myself continue to gain value for her. So um, hopefully you appreciated that and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.